Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, the ancient of days. Thank you, our God and our Father. There is no one that's like you. We have gone to the north, we have gone to the south, we have gone to the east, we have gone to the west. And the Father, there is no one that is like you. Even the northerners are testifying that to you be all the glory. The southerners, the easterners, the westerners, all of them are confessing that you are awesome God, and there is none that is like you. And so, Father, we have come before thee this wonderful night to join the angels and saints to glorify your name. And to you, O Lord, be all the glory, all the worship, and all the adoration be ascribed to your most holy name, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, even this moment of prayer, we recognize our sins, and we know that only you can forgive sins. Only you can heal us. Only you can cleanse us, such that we shall be whiter than snow. And so, Father, we come to you with a repentant heart. We come to you recognizing that we are sinners, recognizing that without you, that these sins cannot be taken away. And so, Holy God, have mercy on us again. Show us your mercy again. Show us your mercy, O oh God. We cannot do without you. Touch us in a special way. Oh, Jesus. Father, fill us with thy fire. Fill us with thy power. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, my Lord. Your word it says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If the people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and then come to me and pray and seek my face, Father, you gave your word that as they return to you from their wicked ways, then you shall hear from heaven the cries of your children. Father, we ask of you this night to forgive the sins of your people. Father, heal our land again in the name of Jesus. Every sin we have committed by our thoughts, by our actions, Father, we ask for mercy. Wash us with thy mercy. Wash us with thy precious blood. Show us your mercy again. Oh, Jesus. Father, show mercy, O oh God. Show mercy, Father. Let your salvation locate your people in the name of Jesus. Let the wickedness be taken out of the life of your people. Father, show your mercy again. We thank you, Father, because we know that having asked for forgiveness of sins, that we are confident that you have answered us. To you be all the glory. We know you have forgiven us, and we are grateful, O oh Lord. Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Thank you, ancient of days. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. And the Bible says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to your mercy, according to his mercy, we have been saved. He has saved us. And so, Father, we stand on that scripture of Titus 3, verse 5 to claim the mercy you have given to us. And we're here to say thank you. Blessed be your name. We cover ourselves once more under the message, under the messenger, with the blood of Jesus. And we decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. Father, empower your servant, whom you are going to use tonight to minister. Father, fill him with thy power. Fill him with thy anointing. Fill him, O Lord, with thy shekinah in the name of Jesus. Who can do this if not you? Thank you, mighty God. We begin to cover our prayer tonight with the blood of Jesus. Talk to God now. Talk to him and tell him, Father, I want you to remember me tonight. I want you to show your mercy tonight. I want to receive from you tonight. I want to hear your plans for me tonight. Oh, Jesus, Father, touch me, Lord. Just talk to him. Say, Lord, remember me tonight. Father, take away my desolate life. Take away everything that is desolate in my life. Father, I need a touch. I need a touch of the Master. Father, remember me tonight. The things you have been doing for people, the testimonies you have given to people, Father, I want to experience my own. Father, I need a touch, O oh Lord. Papa, touch me again. Holy Spirit, touch me again. In the name of Jesus, talk to him, talk to him. Take him not to pass you by tonight. Take him not to pass you by tonight. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Papa, do not pass me by. I have heard the wonderful things that you are doing in the house of God in this very ministry. Father, today I want to express my own testimony. Father, remember your people. Oh, Jesus. Remember your people, oh God. Show mercy to the household of Israel. Who can do this mercy if not you? Father, remember me. Holy Spirit, remember me. Talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him to remember you. 
I want to tell you something. When you ask God for something, as far as that is in line with His will, He will answer you. Talk to Him now. It is mine to show you mercy. It is mine to remember you. Talk to Him and say, Lord, I need a touch of the Master. I need your mercy, O oh Lord. Father, help me, Lord. Father, I want to encounter you in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. It's us. Show me your salvation, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, the God of glory. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. My dear friends, I have the pleasure to welcome each and every one of us to the heart of Jesus and many ministries. Today, we are going to look at the scripture and we're asking God to give us deep and abiding understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, enlighten us as we go through the word of God, as we go through your word, enlighten us in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My dear friends, we are going to take our reading from the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. Thank you, Jesus. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verse 12 to 14. Luke chapter 7, verse 12 to 14. We are going to read from New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and he was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bear, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Rise! And this is the Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, I have a message that is titled, It Shall Not Happen Again. It Shall Not Happen Again. The, the title of this talk speaks for itself. It Shall Not Happen Again. I, I don't know the story. I don't know what has been happening. But today, the Holy Spirit is bringing it to us, it shall not happen again. You, you may have passed through so many ordeals. It may have become a pattern. But today says, the voice of the Lord says, the scripture says, it shall not happen again. It shall not happen again. You may have lost that battle so many years. You may have lost that court case so many times. In different seasons, you may have failed at exams several times. I mean, you have done your best, but it has become a pattern. But today, the voice of the Lord says, it shall not happen again. It shall not happen again. That's where we stand in the prayer. If you are in agreement with me that this is your message, if you are in agreement with me that even though you have been weeping, but that today's message is going to put a full stop to that weeping. And even if they are going to be weeping again, 
that it shall be the weeping of joy. It should be the cry of joy. It should be the cry of joy. Praise the Lord. And so I have a message for somebody today that the Holy Spirit is locating you. Can you begin to talk to him now and say, Lord, I haven't listened to this message, but I know you have a package for me. I know you have a package for me. This disaster, it shall not happen again. This failure syndrome shall not happen again. These troubles I've gone through, it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. This miscarriage, it shall not happen again. This very problem in the office, it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. It shall not happen again. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every power of the enemies against my life, it shall not happen again. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. It shall not happen again. This divorce shall not happen again. This very trouble shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Cry to the Lord. Tell him that it shall not happen again. Makatarababa. Call on the Holy Spirit. Call on the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit stop everything that wants to stop your life. Anyone thing that wants to block your life. They have been blocking it before. But now it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Father, O oh Lord. Every promise and fair affair. It shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Every going out and coming in with shame. It shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus. It shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I don't know the spirit has taken your child to the prison. But it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. This very sickness. That takes me to the hospital every time. That takes me to the clinic every time. It shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Jesus. The Lord wants to hear your voice. As you declare it, so shall it be. And the Bible says, Numbers 14, verse 28. That which I have heard you say, that I will do. Let the Lord hear you say it. That it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Talk to him now, talk to him now. Jesus, Jesus, it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Prayer, 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 prayer. I don't know the commotion in the house. I don't know the conspiracy in the office. I don't know what this story is all about. But what I know is it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, yes, my Lord. This bad news, this ugly news, it shall not happen again. This deadly situation, it shall not prevail. Talk to the Lord now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, it shall not happen again. It shall not happen again. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it shall not happen again. I shall not bury my children young again. I shall not bury my husband again. Makatarababa. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus, it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every power, every spirit, every kingdom that is sponsoring this weeping, sponsoring these troubles, so sponsoring this crisis in my family, I command them to hear the voice of the Lord today. The Lord said today, it shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, it shall not happen again. I shall not weep again. In the name of Jesus. Who? Oh, Jesus. But our friends, we took our reading from Luke chapter 7, verse 12 to 14. And the Bible told us the story of a widow. Being a widow means that this woman had lost her husband. The Bible did not give us the name of this woman, 
But the Bible calls her the widow of Nain. A woman that dead came and snatched her husband from her. And as if that was not enough, the devil came again. And uh, this time around took her only son, her only child. Took that child away from her. As far as the love of that woman was concerned, affliction had arisen a second time. The affliction that took her husband had come on a second journey to come and take another life in the family. But Jesus intervened in that situation. <laughs> Jesus came to change her story. Jesus is our story changer. The story of this woman is a story of affliction, affliction, affliction. But Jesus says, no, it shall not continue to the affliction, 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 affliction. Jesus now came and say, put a full stop. Sometimes the life of so many of us are best described as affliction, affliction, affliction. In fact, in most cases, it continues to the affliction, affliction, affliction without an end. But today, Jesus comes to put a full stop. If I divide one by three, usually you get 0 0.333. That three has no end. It has no end. But if you want it to end, then you put a full stop. Then it becomes 0 0.3 or 0 0.33. I don't know the affliction that has been seriously growing in your family. That nobody has put a full stop. They God say today, he is coming to put a full stop. Even if you're not ready to put a full stop, God is ready out of mercy to put a full stop. It is time for somebody to cry to the Lord and say today, Lord, I am putting a full stop. I am calling upon the angels of God to come and help me to put a full stop to this river of crisis, to this river of shame in my family. This river of affliction in my family, I put a full stop today. This tree of affliction in my family, I put a full stop today in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the one who changed the story has come to change the story. His name is Jesus. Jesus is my story changer. I'm talking about me. Oh. I don't know about you. But if he is your story changer, then you claim it and declare him your story changer. If Jesus is your story changer, then call on him now. Let him do for you what he did for this woman of Nain. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Father, what you did for that woman. Affliction arose the second time. But Father, you put a full stop to it. You intervene in her session. My Lord and my Father, intervene in this ugly mess I'm going through. Intervene in this affliction I'm going through. Father, intervene, O oh Lord. Oh Jesus. Father, arise and show me mercy. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Oh, the enemy gave this woman a name, a woman of affliction, and affliction followed her. But one wonderful day, Jesus intervened. Jesus met her just a stone throw from the graveyard where her only child was to be buried. It was as if everything that this woman labored for in life had gone. Husband gone. Child gone. So what, what is her joy again? Many of us, the things that give us joy have been swallowed by the evil ones. Hmm. But I'm praying for you tonight that the God we serve, whose name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will locate you. May he locate you. <laughs> Jesus did not allow affliction to rise the second time in the life of this woman. My dear friends, I want you to take note of something. 
The Bible did not give us the name of this woman. But the Bible gave us the name of her city. Her city was known as Nain. And because she came from Nain, she became a widow of Nain. Do you understand what I'm talking about? People knew her by the city she came from. <laughs> but in that city, she was known by her misfortune. She was known by the affliction going on in her life. Many of us are known by the misfortune that have come to us. Don't you know that woman that fire burned down the whole house and killed her husband, killed her children? Why would that be your story? Why would that be your label? Why would it be your identity? They don't know you by your name, but they know you by your misfortune. God says tonight, He is changing that level. He is changing that level. People may have labeled you one name or another. Friends may have even given you names. <laughs> even you may have even called yourself, given yourself a name that is not present, just like Naomi. Naomi, in the book of Ruth. When the enemy took her husband away, making her a widow, and she was still trying to recover from that shock, then she lost one of her two sons. Of course, she had only two children, and they were all sons. So the death came and took one, and the one was left. And she was in a very senior, serious panic mood. She lost joy, as if that was enough. Death came again in the city of Moab and took the second son, rendered her childless, rendered her a widow. Affliction arose the second time in her life. When she came back to Bethlehem, because all that happened to her, her misery, her shame, her, her affliction came when she was in a city called Moab. But when she came back to Bethlehem, her own land, people saw her and said, Ah, is that Naomi? She looks like Naomi. But 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 this could be Naomi. Naomi used to be beautiful. Naomi used to be look used to be glorious. She used to be a very wonderful woman. Always smiling, always laughing. How come she's wearing the garment of affliction? How come she's she's no more happy? Naomi said, Don't call me Naomi. For now, it means the pleasant one. Call me Mara. Mara means bitterness. For life has not been fair to me. For life has brought bitterness to me. For my sweet water has turned to bitter water. Why call me Naomi, the pleasant one? When everything around me, even as you can see, is suggestive of bitterness. She gave herself that name, Mara. Maybe you have given yourself the name Mara because of the bitterness you are going through. Because of the serial misfortune that have come into your life. Maybe because affliction has become a part and parcel of your story. But I want to tell you something. I cannot change that story. I don't even have the power to change that story. But I know of a man who changed my story. I, I, as I'm talking to you, I, I remember when I used to cry. I said, God, if you will remember me and change my story, I will never leave you. I will, I will tell people about you. I will be an evangelist. I was making that promise years, years, years back. And that God indeed changed my story. I am a living testimony and a testament to the fact 
that there is a God in heaven that listens to people who are in affliction. People that their life had become miserable. People that the only way to describe them is people that are drinking the bitter cup of life. People that are affliction have come to visit them the second time. I used to be one of them, but today God has remembered me. And I'm here to pray for you that that God that remembered me and took me from away from this from that well of dungeon, from that well without water, from that well of affliction. May that God be your God today and remember you. I have come today to pray for you. I have come today to pray with you. I have come today to pray that that label of misfortune on your forehead shall be raised with the blood of Jesus. There are people written on their forehead is misfortune. And anywhere they go, misfortune follow them. And they keep wondering, maybe because I'm living in this city. This city is not favorable to me. And they change city. The same story. They change country. The same story. Because they have not addressed the matter. The matter is that there is a misfortune written on their head. There is a failure written boldly on their head. But they're not seeing it. One was talking to me a few days ago. I said, brother, all I'm going through when I was in my country was, it's, not, it's terrible, brother. If I start to leave my story here, I'm not going to leave you. But brother, what is surprising me is that I left my country and I'm here in the United States. But it is still the same story. Nothing has changed. It is still the same problem, the same pattern. These people that don't know me here, they are still, same thing still happening. Say, brother, what is going on? I am here to address that matter. It is the tree of affliction. It is the spirit that says that affliction shall happen the second time. It is the spirit that says the disaster shall happen again. But today, the Bible says it shall not happen again. I didn't say I said. I am telling you the Bible says it shall not happen again. Oh, brother, what do you mean? Is it in the Bible? Permit me to take you to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 7, just to answer that question. That this is not my statement. It is God himself talking. Isaiah 7, verse 7, and the Bible says, Yet, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It shall not take place. It shall not happen again. This affliction shall not happen again. Period. And because the Lord has said it, so shall it be. Because the Lord has declared it, so shall it be. When the Lord says it, so it is. Nothing can stop the voice of the Lord. The word of God concerning you shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Do, do you hear that? That word of God, what God has said concerning you, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. That today, the Lord is saying, the affliction is over. The Lord is saying, that serial affliction shall be destroyed. It shall be cut into pieces. In the name of Jesus. There is something called the cord, cord, the cord of affliction, or the cord of wickedness. It is a, 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 a satanic uh, a cord, or rope, or, or chain that the enemy uses to tie down the life of somebody. For example, somebody could be tied using the cord of wickedness, or the cord of affliction, to a tree of affliction, or to the tree of miscarriage, or to the tree of shame, or I mean, whatever tree you are tied to, today that tree shall, that cord shall be broken. I am cutting it off in the spiritual realm. Let us open our mouth and begin to pray now. Makataraba, pray now, pray now, pray now. Every evil power, every evil cord, every cord of wickedness, every cord of python, every satanic cord, every cord of snake that you to tie me to the evil tree, to the tree of shame, to the tree of disaster, to the tree of misfortune. Today, in the name of Jesus, I take the word of God as a sword in the spirit to amputate and cut down and cut into pieces. And that cord shall be cut to pieces. I cut into pieces that cord in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, I call them that evil tree. I call them that evil cord. I call them that evil rope. I call them right now in the name of Jesus. I can no more be tied to that affliction in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. That promise and fair syndrome. I cancel it right now. That near success syndrome. I cancel it right now. That love of story, story, story. I cancel it right now. That love of affliction, affliction, affliction. I cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray now. Pray, 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 pray
Play on South of Breakthrough. Play on South of Breakthrough. It shall not happen again. I shall pass this exam. It shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus, pray my people, pray my people, every power coming against me in the spiritual realm to come and sleep with me, to cause me to miscarry, to miscarry my testimony, it shall not happen again. I cut them down, I cut them down, for the Bible says that the word of God is spirit, the word of God is fire, the word of God is a sword, and so I cut into pieces every satanic amputate, every atatata, let them be broken down, let them be broken now. Let them be broken now. My people begin to pray. Begin to pray now. Every fight of spirit against my life. Let them be crushed now. Every slave spirit prolonging my problem. Sponsoring the problem going through. Let them be beheaded now. In the name of Jesus, I use the sword of the spirit, the word of God, to put them into pieces, to slice them into pieces. In the name of Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Robotere Bobo. Jesus. Papa, oh Lord, answer. My Lord and my Father. Father, destroy every plan of the devil against my family. Every plan of the devil to destroy my life. Today I say no way. Today I say no more. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I don't feel so happy in the spirit of realm, really. I feel so happy. Because what is happening through the prayer? <laughs> People are already receiving testimonies. Jesus. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Woo! Let, let me tell you something. I, I'm so excited about this my prayer. The Bible says it shall not happen again. Oh, my goodness. How, how do I put this story to be clear to you? When the Lord says it, that's the two seat. Do you hear what I'm talking about? I, I'm only here to proclaim what the Lord has said. What he has said, that I just proclaim. All right? The Lord says, it shall not happen the second time. It shall not happen again. So when the devil comes to tell you, <laughs> don't mind, brother, okay? You see? Don't you see that, are you not having the sight again? Don't you see the signs? Don't you see the signs of that miscarriage? Are you not having spotted now? And he's giving you something that looks like facts. But they're not facts. They are lies. They are meant to make you lose faith. Because when you lose faith, you give the devil an upper hand to deal with you. Remember that Peter started sinking when he started to be afraid. But when he had faith, he was walking on the water. The devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you to lose your faith. He wants you to sink into stupor. But today, we are the children of God. We're not going to give him that chance again. We cannot live in error again. The Bible says that affliction, that affliction, that affliction, it shall not happen again. It shall not happen again. I say it shall not happen again. Thus says the Lord. Not thus says the Wakwe. Wakwe has no business in this. If God says, it shall not happen again. Period. <laughs> oh my goodness. If, even if this message ends now, I think it's okay. Because I have just declared it, that it shall not happen again. Thus says the Lord. That, that puts power to the message. Because it, it, it was the Lord talking that it shall not happen the second time. <laughs> and because the Lord has said it, so shall it be. Remember Isaiah 14, verse 24. And the Bible says, Surely, as I have planned it, as I have decreed it, as I have proposed it, so shall it be. <laughs> I like the way God talks. <laughs> and you need to see how, when, when I'm confronting demons, I usually tell them, not what I've said, but what Jesus has said. I say, Jesus have told me, and I remind him the scripture. By the time I started telling him Jesus said, he started running. Because he knows that it's not more me talking, it is the power of the word of God. If you must have victory in life, you must learn how to use the word of God to clear your way. 
All right? Because what God says is what happens. Remember Isaiah 14, verse 27. For the Lord Almighty has proposed, and who can thwart him? And now I'm asking you, who can thwart the plan of God? That's the question in Isaiah 14, verse 27. When the hand of the Lord is straight out, who can pull it back? <laughs> in other words, who can fight with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? That is song that people used to sing. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. I say nobody. I say nobody. Nobody can battle with him. Because he has said it, so shall it be. And we, his children, the only thing we have to do is to stand on the promises of God. If you can learn how to stand the promise of God, I tell you your name is victory. Your name is victory. People of victory are people who know they are, who they are in Christ. And those who know who they are in Christ, they know what the word of God has said concerning their lives. They know the promises of God for them in the scripture. And they appropriate that promise of God by proclaiming the scripture. People who don't know the word of God, the devil just deal with them mercilessly. Maybe this is a talk for another day. I don't know what is trampling you down, but God says it shall not happen again. <laughs> oh my goodness. In Isaiah 14, verse 25, the Bible says, I will cross the Assyrians. The Assyrians, I will cross them in my hand. Uh oh. I thought, I, thought, I thought the God would have said, I will crush them by, by, by my, my feet. Because we expect him to crush them. All right? With his feet. But he said, he didn't say no. He said, I am crushing them by my hand. You don't cross things by hand. But the power that's in the hand of God is more than able. To crush that Assyrian, that enemy, that canker worm, that Pama worm, that Jebusite, that Canaanite. I don't know who they are in your life. That Moabite, that enemy in your life, that cancer eating your flesh, that tumor in your womb. The Bible says in the name of Jesus, that very situation, that very affliction, it shall not happen again. It shall not happen a second time. In the name of Jesus, every yoke in my life, I command to be broken now. In the name of Jesus, for this affliction shall not happen a second time. In the name of Jesus, I call the Assyrians now, for they shall not prevail again. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, every spirit that is loading my life with the burden, every spirit loading my life with the evil load, I command you now, carry your evil load and go. In the name of Jesus, carry your evil load. Hey, love will change now. I cannot carry this affliction again. I cannot carry over again. In the name of Jesus. God has a plan for you. It shall not happen again. I don't know what is eating your profit in that business. But from the prophetic office, I declare spirits that have been assigned to eat your profits, to render that business into afflicted business, I command such spirits in the name of Jesus. Let them be cut into pieces. In the name of Jesus. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The angels of God are moving now. They are cutting them into pieces now. I'm protecting them, cutting their legs, cutting their heads, cutting off every part of their being. They shall not carry on with that problem into your life again. Their mother is being destroyed. Even the demon that is pregnant this night is going to suffer miscarriage. In fact, they are suffering miscarriage now. 
in the name of Jesus. That snake spirit that is full of thousands of snakes in the womb to come and deliver your family, to come and lay eggs in your family. Today we smash the eggs into pieces. Today we cripple and destroy that mother demon that wants to come and deliver children of affliction in your family. I set them on fire. I set their mother on fire. I set their children on fire. Rikata Rababa. My people begin to pray now. Today demons are in trouble. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Jesus, my I claim the power of Jesus. I release the power of Jesus against the forces of darkness, against principles and powers in high places that have stood against me, that have stood against me. Arake terebo, let them be destroyed now. Every giant against me, every Goliath against my life, let them be beheaded now. Let them be destroyed now. Let them be crippled now. In the name of Jesus, every prince of Peshia standing on my way, standing on my territory. Testimony. I command them now in the name of Jesus. Let them suffer casualty. Let them suffer casualty in the name of Jesus. <laughs> they want us to suffer casualty. So the plan has backfired. And they are the ones suffering the casualty. <laughs> Oh my God, sometimes I wish you had seen what I'm seeing right now. The angels are just slicing, 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 slicing. They're just slicing, slicing them. They're throwing them. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. 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 For the people who are going to their business now, slicing this naughty, stubborn spirit that are afflicting your people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the family I've stepped into. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's affliction is coming from your home. Somebody's affliction is coming from your roots. Somebody's affliction is coming from your ancestry, from your lineage. And now Jesus has located the root of that problem. And he's now setting the root on fire. He's now setting the demons on fire. He's now setting that spirit on fire. That affliction is now happen again. That affliction is now happen again. Oh, Robo Seketimba. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Call on Jesus, call on Jesus. He is here tonight, here tonight, to come and do something new. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Call on Him, call on Him. Ask Him to remember you tonight. Ask Him to remember you tonight. My God, my Lord and my Father, remember me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Ask him to change your story. What he did for the woman of Nain, for the widow of Nain, let him do it for you. Let him do it for you. Call on him, call on him. That God is a living God. That God is a mighty God. That God is a wonderful God. Let him come down and touch you now. Let him remove every evil label. Every evil label on your family. I don't know the level that is following you, but today, in the name of Jesus, we stand against that level. That evil level is on fire. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, it's us. Every evil level that's after our family, that wants everybody in the family to carry that badge, to carry that level, I cancel it now. I cancel it now. Every satanic signature, every satanic footprint, every satanic fingerprint that is in my family, I cancel it line. I cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus, it shall not happen again. It shall not happen again. Rika Tarababa. It shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus, can I hear somebody pray now? Can I hear somebody pray now? You can pray better than that, my friend. You can pray better than that. Somebody can vibrate in prayer. You can vibrate in prayer. The more you are praying, the more the angels are empowered to slice them into pieces. Even as the prayer is going on, look at the millions of angels. They are everywhere ready for war. And they are at war now. They are fighting and fighting now. Can somebody stand up and pray? Can somebody stand up and pray? This is a warfare prayer. This is a warfare prayer. Rika Tarababa. Jesus, pray, 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 pray. Pray yourself to bless you. Pray yourself to bless you. Rika Tarababa. Jesus, every evil level, every evil nomenclature, I cancel them tonight. I cancel them tonight. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. I reject them tonight. In the name of Jesus. 
They say I shall not get married. But I shall get married. They say my children will not get married. But they shall get married. In the name of Jesus. I cancel, I cancel. Every satanic word against my children. Every satanic voice against my people. I cancel now. I cancel now. I cancel now. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Sometimes when, when demons are running like this, sometimes I start laughing because they want us to run, but now they are running. Hmm? They are running now. <laughs> I think they I think they said they are champions. So why 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 are the champions running now? Because somebody asked that demon question. Say, why are you running? Why not the one that say you're a strong man? Why are you running today? You said you're a mighty man. Why is he running today? Because the mightier one has come. Jesus is the mightier one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do, 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 do. They are running now. Ha <laughs> ha yeah, yeah. Maybe you are labeled the barren one. Maybe you are labeled the dying one. I, I don't know what. Maybe you are labeled the angry one. Nothing makes you happy because marriage is full of disaster. Business is disaster. Everything you put on is disaster. And so you're not happy. You are angry. People are seeing wrinkles on your face. You don't know when last you smiled. But I'm praying for you tonight. That angry one is not your name again. That angry one is not your name again. That the broken one is not your name again. In the name of Jesus, may God stand for you. Every evil tag. I don't need a tag against your life. I don't need a tag on your life. I set that tag on fire. I cancel that tag on you. In the name of Jesus. When you go to the shop to buy things, you see you see tags. Twelve dollar tag. The other one will be seventy five dollar tag. You just look at the tag. And if it's of interest to you to buy it, then you proceed. All right? Some of the tags has for sale, on sale. Some of them has buy one, get two free. Different thing tags. What is the tag on your life? Has the enemy tagged you for sale? You see, that was how they tagged Joseph for sale. Joseph, he was tagged for sale. In fact, the, the original tag on his life was death. But on a second thought, they said, why kill him? Let's just sell him. So they, they, they removed the tag. The tag written death. And, and they now put uh, for sale. And so they sold him and got some money out of it. So Joseph became a, a, a property. Oh my goodness. Do you know there are families that have been sold to the enemy? There are destinies that have been sold. There are destinies with a tag for sale. There are destinies with a tag. Death syndrome. It's not that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're doing it. But nothing's working out because there's a tag. But remember, Jesus already had a tag for us. The tag of blessedness. The tag of righteousness. The, the tag of God's heritage. All right? <laughs> the tag of glory. That's what Jesus put on us. That's what Jesus put on us. Don't ask me, did I, do I know where he put it? But I know he put it there. I know, I know for myself that the tag on me, that the Bible test talked to me about it in First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, that on my forehead is a tag written, chosen people. So my family chosen. It's a tag. Royal priesthood. First Peter 2 verse 9. is a tag. That's a tag. It's a tag that Jesus has for his children. That is your plate number. 
a holy nation. That, that is a tag. God's special position. That means Brokwe is special. Alright? That's a tag. But if I don't know about this tag, then the devil will come and take away the tag and put the opposite. That was happened to Adam and Eve. They had a tag on their head, chosen people, and that tag, holy people, and that tag, priesthood, special people, people of praise, and so on and so forth. Man of praise, woman of praise. The devil saw these things and came and convinced them to eat the apple. The moment they ate the apple, the tag was switched. It was exchanged. I hope I'm communicating this night. And so, where the, on their forehead was written L I F E tag, plate number. Life. Because they, they were not created to die, I hope you know that. But when they ate the apple, the L I F E disappeared. And the, the devil, not God now, the devil himself now superimposed, put there D E A T H, death. That becomes a plate number. That had death came into the world. That became a tag. If Adam and Eve had known who they were in God, they wouldn't have been able to trade their destiny. If you don't know who you are in Christ, the devil will make you who you are not. <laughs> oh my goodness. Jesus. People of light, that's a tag. But now the devil came and put darkness. You see that? <laughs> I don't know the tag in your life that have been changed or stolen or, or put. Maybe they put something else. But I pray tonight, let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration. Whatever thing the devil has stood out of my life, every divine tag on my life of glory that I've been taken away by the enemies, Father, restore tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the line of travel do that restore. <laughs> Jesus. My friends in God, God is talking to us this night. He wants to see us through tonight. He wants to cancel, destroy, put on fire every evil tag. Families that are put tag. Businesses that are the tag of, of... What is the opposite of uh, profit again? Loss. Okay? Some green business and the person will not have anything to show. That is an evil tag. Tag of loss in my business. In the name of Jesus. Cut fire. In Jesus' name. Mm. Woo. Jesus. You know about this man called Jabez, right? <laughs> there was a tag on his life. The tag of pain. He was living life in pain. In fact, the name Jabez means pain. Pain. Everything about life of Jabez was pain. Even when people are sleeping. Can you imagine somebody sleeping and being in pain? That was love of Jabez. He was waking up in the morning from sleep in the morning. Pain. Everything about his life, pain. But the day he prayed, I said, God, enlarge my cause and show mercy on me. The Bible said it. God heard him. That day, the name tag was changed. God restored the tag. In fact, let me tell you something. In a sense, Jabez will pray for change of name tag. Think about it. Because God gave him glory. You remember the Bible described Jabez as an honorable man. An honorable. That's the only place you see in the scripture. That Jabez was an honorable man. For God to tell somebody honorable man, all that means, yet his life was, his life was not honorable. But God called him honorable. Meaning that when God brought him to this world, there was an identity, a DNA, a name tag, a label. 
of glory, of, of being honorable. That was his name tag. But the enemy took it away and put in pain. And so this guy had been living life in pain. What people get is he doesn't even see it at all. Don't let get it. Get begging. But the day he cried to God, I said, God, change this name tag. Change this affliction. Change this disaster. I, I'm tired of it. Change it, Lord. God answered him. Is, is it possible that God will answer me tonight? He has already answered me. I don't know for you, but if you are sure, then you claim your own. Jacob, he had his own name tag changed. You remember I used to answer Jacob, but he became Israel. Name changed. Name tag changed. I wish Esau had gone to God and cried to him to change his own name tag. But he didn't. So he died a miserable one. Name tag. <laughs> this affliction shall not happen the second time. Look at the man David. A nobody. Living in the wilderness, taking care of the fellowship. Even when Samuel came to the house of Jesse, that is the, the, the father of David being Jesse, kept his house to anoint the king there. All the boys who came there, all the boys we are all lined up, but David was not there until everyone was sampled and the, 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 the blessing, the anointing could not fall on any of them. God did not select any of them. And then somewhere has to ask Jesse, is that all? Then he remembered, oh, um, there's one uh, taking care of the sheep over, over there. He, he, he wasn't even on the agenda. Nobody even remembered him. He was considered a, a nobody. But God saw him as a somebody. If you can't get him, perhaps he could be the one. The moment he was coming, smelling like, smelling like sheep, smelling like goat. Because they, they were his companions. All right? He came smelling all those things, wearing rags, looking dirty, unkept. And then the moment he came into the show, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, Behold, the king, anoint him. The moment he was anointed, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Right there, his name tag was changed. His name tag was changed. There was no more story of how David was in the was in the in the in in, in, the, in the flock again. Name tag had changed. God took him to the palace. God made him a king. From a shepherd to a king, that's a quantum jump. Because name tag had changed. That's my prayer for you tonight. For God to change your name tag. All right? Anointing for change of name tag. Let that anointing fall on you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. As you are receiving this anointing, Mark let every power, evil power, every spirit of cause that is behind that evil name tag be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit nullify and cancel every evil tag cause that's upon your life. Let them be broken now. <laughs> Jesus. Mother friends, in the story of the woman or the widow of Nain, the Bible took time to tell us about the size of the people following her. The Bible said that there were a lot of people. In fact, the Bible used the word large. A large crowd of people followed her. But the Bible did not tell us whether these people were praying for her. The Bible didn't say that. But the Bible did tell us that they were mourning. They were mourning. My friend, there, I don't know who is in your crowd, really. There are people, there are some friends who are cosmetic friends. Just cosmetics. I'm telling you. They are part of your crowd, but not there for you. They pretend to be your friend, but not your friend. But 
who is in your crowd. There are people in your crowd, they want to see you fall. They want to see you down fall. Not all of them are, are weeping with you. <laughs> the man that they pull up beside her, this man cried to Jesus, I have no man. But I have a question. How come this man who was crippled, how, how come he was at the pull up beside her? He, he wasn't walking. He was crippled. So he was carried on a street. But who, how did he get himself there? Somebody carried him to that pool of beside and abandoned him there. And so the man said, I have no one to take me to the river. Eh? I'd been in that situation for 38 years. <laughs> if he, if he, do you know that man was the most of the crowd? The Bible said, even when the day Jesus remembered this man and came to the crowd, behold, Jesus saw the crowd, but he didn't see the crowd. Take note of my sentence. He saw the crowd, but he didn't see the crowd. He saw the man. So he went to the crowd and spoke to the man, spoke to change his situation, spoke life to the situation. Take, stand up, take up your mat and go. The man was not going to have nobody to take to. To, to take me to the river. This was my friend, you are in the old chapter. Take up your mat and go, period. And I said to it. Because Jesus said it. Affliction did not happen in the second last man again. People were around him, but nobody showed pity for him. Nobody even took him into that river or the pool of Bethsaida. Nobody. People were interested in their own affair, but not this man's affair. He didn't touch any of them to carry this man into the water. Nobody. Who is in your crowd? <laughs> Every friend that is not meant to help you, I pray tonight, let them not step into your destiny. And that's my prayer for you. It's not a bad prayer. If anybody cannot be part of my crowd, let them not step into my destiny. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I pray that God will disconnect you. I pray that God will disconnect you and disconnect me and disconnect this ministry from anyone who is not meant to be my crowd. <laughs> so I'm praying and I ask the Lord to remove from your way every mocker, every scorner, every ungodly person that is in your life. May God remove them. Let God remove them. God remove them. That weeping shall stop in the name of Jesus. You see, the, the, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4, is it a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time, just like that. Keep going. How come somebody will come to a time to weep and it will cease and time to laugh will not come? Why would it be a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to be afflicted, a time to cry? Why? Why not a time to dance, a time to la Why not that one? Name change. Tag is changing tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When Jesus came to that crowd and located that woman, Whose son, whose only son, only child, died. Jesus changed that ugly story. The woman's weeping, cry, tears, got changed. When Jesus comes your way, every morning, every weeping shall stop in the name of Jesus. And he will give you life. And that's what I'm praying tonight. May he walk into your family. May he walk into your family. I say it again. May he walk into your family. Can you talk to him and say, Lord, walk into my family. Walk into my family. Stop this mourning. Stop this weeping. Father, replace with laughter. Replace with dance. I want to dance. Put, put laughter in my mouth in the name of Jesus. I, I like David, Psalm 51, 15. He said, the Lord, open my lips and proclaim thy praise. Proclaim thy praise. May God give you Praise in your mouth. I don't know what to want to stop your testimony. May God stop them tonight in the name of Jesus. May He give you life. Give your children life. Only Jesus can do that. 
He's a life giver. In fact, he is life himself. He is our joy. He is the lifter of our soul. Our lifter of our head. There are people like ostrich. They put their head in the, in the, in the ground. Bury it in shame. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is that ostrich person? May God pull you out from that, pull your head off from that heap of ash. May the Lord lift your head. Don't bury your head in the ash again, okay? Don't bury your head in that shame. May God lift up your head. For the Bible says, for God is the lifter up of my head. I do not know what the enemy has stolen from you. I don't know how many years you have wept or mourned. I don't even know what your story is like. But Jesus knows. And I'm praying tonight that he blesses you. That he wipes your tears. Today, I am here to make a special announcement. That no more affliction. That affliction cannot happen a second time. I am announcing it in the name of Jesus. I announce it to you that your season of weeping is over in the name of Jesus. That season of joy is now in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, I pray that your dreams shall come true, that your dreams shall not die in the name of Jesus, that your well shall not run dry, that your womb shall not run dry. He shall carry children. Your hands shall touch children. Your hands shall touch favor. Your hands shall touch grace in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, your plans that are planned but are failed. I pray today because of this name tag that I've changed, because of the fact that this affliction has not happened a second time, I pray for you that God will make that plans to come to pass because he really tells us in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that I know the plan I have for you that you shall prosper. May God turn that shame into glory. May he turn all that stagnant life let it become a life with glory in the name of Jesus. I speak the grace upon you. Where you are dead, come back to life. May God give you an uncommon miracle in the name of Jesus. Let him touch you now. Let him revive your prayer life in the name of Jesus. I don't know the poison that I've injected into your dream. May God heal you today. May God restore you today. Maybe, perhaps, the best of doctors. I'm, I'm talking about the, the, best, the best of the best of doctors may have said this is impossible. They may have given up on you. But today, Dr. Jesus has said, afflictions are not happening the second time. And that's where we stand. He is Jesus. He is the balm of Gilead. He is the one that heals our diseases. He is the heavenly physician, the great doctor of all ages. In the, his name, I declare to you that today, the affliction is no more. In the name of Jesus. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Of course, no. Genesis 18 verse 14. Is there anything to add for Lord? Second Kings 3 verse 18. And the Bible says, This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. And I'm here to proclaim to you that God is more than able to bring life to that business, to bring life to your destiny again, to bring life to your business again, even to your family again. That God is more than able. If this is what you believe, I just want to hear you say hallelujah. Because this is the season of hallelujah. This is the season of God making the impossible to be possible. Luke 1 verse 37. And the Bible says that with God all things are possible. Matthew 19 verse 26. And the Bible says, with the man, this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. Let that God be your God. Let that God be your God. Let that God give you uncommon praise, uncommon miracle. Let that God locate you tonight. Let that God bless you tonight. Let him change that ugly record against your life. No record of the enemies against your prevail again. Let God change your evil record. That evil record is cancelled now. That record against that woman, that should not be a, a mother. I cancel it now. It's cancelled in the name of Jesus. Affliction shall not happen again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I pray over every department of your life or your family that God, the life of Jesus, will flow like a river into you there now. Uncommon miracles is like a river. Receive that now. Let the door come upon you. The Bless my God, come on you. In the name of Jesus, let him touch you. Let him touch you. I am ministering grace upon you. That joy shall be your name. That grace shall be your name. That testimony shall be your name. In the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we declare this season. A season that affliction shall not happen a second time again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this message. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the worship. We give you all the adoration. To you be all the glory for the wonders you have done tonight. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We'll cover this message 
with the blood of Jesus. And we know that you have done it again. We are grateful, Father. We cover our brother with the blood of Jesus. Every virtue that has gone out of him, Father, may you replenish a million times over. We cover him, his family, and his business. He's going out and coming in. His ministry We cover with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, the ancient of days, for you have done it, and it's permanent. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. This message is titled, It Shall Not Happen Again. It Shall Not Happen Again. God bless you. In Jesus' name.